Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer After the Campaign video, uh, where once every few months I will select a certain number of games that have come after Kickstarter, after getting prototypes and reviewing them, to show you what they finally look like, the full production copy of the game. I'll give you my assessment on the quality, the stylization, any changes that have been made, and what I think between the previous version of the game and the version where it is currently at now, and whether you should pick it up. And of course, every game will have a link in the description where you can go ahead and choose to pick it up if you would like. It's not a sponsored video in any way, and if you're interested in taking a look at one of these titles, feel free to do so. So, let's get into the video. Now, because I'm doing this in order of which I got the game from the oldest game I've received after a campaign to the newest, the next up is going to be Kingdom Rush, so they're not in a top five variety. I didn't choose what I liked better or worse like I have in the other previous videos. I just want you to decide each one of them on your own based on the theme and style of the game. All these games are really great for what they are and they'll have specific audiences for them and hopefully you are one of them in the different five games I'm showing you. Like Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time by Lucky Duck Games and of course Ironhide Studios, the guys who made the app Kingdom Rush. This is a game based on IP that is an app that is a tower defense game. High quality large. Uh, when I got this it was nothing like this uh, for the prototype. This, this thing is huge. It comes with a ton of stuff, tons of boards. It comes with a map for a campaign. These are this kind of like a mid family slash gamer experience for those of you who are interested in Kingdom Rush and love that experience and want something in a board form. Uh, this is one to definitely take a look at. I believe this plays from one to four players. It does and 60 to 90 minutes as well. The character boards are nice. They fold out as well. You will be utilizing different abilities and actions and you'll progress throughout the game as the campaigns uh, kind of expand upon themselves. And there's a ton of different characters to choose from. You're also going to be getting these little stands that will move across the board when you place them down along with maybe a monster or two. And you'll place these kind of cards inside this uh, little standy thing here. Let's go ahead and see if I can find one. Yeah, here's one. These are some giants. And your objective is to place uh, tokens on top of these tiles here to do damage to them, thusly removing all the monsters and defeating the waves of hordes that are trying to enter into your city and exit into your castle, thusly defeating you. Each character and tower has their own unique style of different pieces that they can use on the boards. You'll have warriors that you can use to defend your castle. There's a whole bunch of cards. There's a ton of expansion content that you'll be using throughout the game and of course there's miniatures as well that you'll be using you've got the main bad guy miniatures in fact one of these really really big ones here which is very nice and then you're also going to have character miniatures that you can actually use to place on the board spaces as well the insert is rather large and has a ton of space in it as you can see um, and you're going to be utilizing a, a bunch of things, like for instance, the locations you'll be placing your towers on. It's kind, of, it's, it's a fully cooperative game, uh, and you have to choose how much, how cooperative you want to be, and how like kind of conservative as far as you owning your own stuff you want to be. Um, but there is so much to this game, and there's a ton of expansions as well. All the components are high quality. Uh, some of the cards are a little lighter than others, I suppose. The miniatures aren't super extremely detailed, but they are high quality, and they are thick, and they're not going to go anywhere if you drop them or throw them across the room. They're very likely to withstand some damage, and everything fits very, very nicely. Um, there's different modes to the game. You can play throughout a campaign mode where you're going to go across the specific locations, kind of like Final Fantasy VII, how you're in the outworld. The same thing is going to happen in this game here. Or, of course, you can set up your own unique variant of play, and you work together, building towers, utilizing your characters to move across the map to stand on these minions or monsters in order to defeat these little pallets, and if you can complete all of them before your life runs out, or whatever trigger is conditioned uh, in order for you to lose the game, then you will win that specific scenario and you will move on. Uh, if you're interested in a tower defense game, this is not a bad option for you. If you want something that's a little, like it's tower defense-ish, because it has other different factors as well, such as like a puzzle feel to it and a cooperative feel to it, it's not gonna be like Defense Grid, which is a complete, like if you want a tower defense game, that is Defense Grid. But this one here is more of like puzzle defense uh, with like character actions and like sharing different components and working together to kind of complete whatever goal it is you're interested in doing. So still, regardless though, it's a very solid game and one I would highly suggest you take a look at if you're interested in a tower defense puzzle style game. Speaking of puzzle games, 
Nouvelle France is by Jack Bro, and it plays two to four players and takes 45 minutes. This is for ages 10 and up, and basically, you're going to hasten to build before the snows come in France. So you'll be taking your own player board, utilizing specific puzzle pieces to build on the board, attempting to complete a barrier around your city uh, as the snow starts building and building and creating a more dangerous atmosphere for you. Uh, when I got this game, it was literally in a bag, so uh, anything would have been better as far as like the display of the game, but it was still high quality and I knew what I was going to expect when uh, this game came in in its fully published version. This game hasn't gotten a lot of love, at least as far as I have seen, and I don't know why, because it is gorgeous looking. It has a ton of beautiful artwork. Maybe that's just because in the US it's like that. Maybe in Europe it's killing it, I'm not sure. Uh, but it has beautiful boards. They're thick, a ton of extra content, just falling everywhere. Um, it's got player scoreboards here. I'll ever, this, it's just got a ton of stuff. Even when I pull this thing out here, these are all the different pieces you're gonna use in the game, like little Tetris style bricks that you'll be placing down uh, in your specific player area, attempting to like cover it up. And you can do certain things like like, like this here. And you're, you're trying to fill it up uh, following the legal rules of it as snows come around. And you have these little snow pieces that you'll put around your board, making things more challenging as you go along. Uh, it's got beautiful, thick uh, statue stuff. It's like, like a bronze statue of, of characters. Like, they, did above and beyond for this game. It's got a nice little insert here. There's also an insert for the player spaces here. Tons of different choices as far as the different little puzzle or Tetris pieces you'll be utilizing. This is a Cali game through and through. Cali loves puzzle games and Novelle France does a great job of it. And every single piece, they've just made the highest quality. So I really respected that. I was, this was actually astonishingly like, like surprising when I saw the quality, the large box. I was kind of expecting a smaller box game with some like, you know, more plastic sticky style puzzle pieces uh, but what they sent was actually what they were going to make for the game these like really beautiful glued together style puzzle tetris pieces and it's just a lot of fun as a puzzle game it's complex and challenging definitely and there's a bit of a drafting uh, slash bidding type of a system to get these guys here kind of like uh like patchwork in a way and uh, it does a great job of it and you're kind of if you like spatial reasoning, spatial awareness, uh, where you're trying to learn what fits in where, this is going to be a solid choice for you. Overall, extremely high quality game, beautiful artwork. I've said it all already. If you're interested in picking it up, there'll be a link in the description. Every game I've shown you today and will show you is going to be extremely high quality, in my opinion. This is, they all went above and beyond expectations and blew me out of the water even past that. So I was expecting maybe, you know, a solid game. You know, you expect kind of like an average looking style game i don't know for instance uh between two castles you know this one here it's 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 got uh, nice pieces it fits inside of a thing it, it, it's stonemeyer game they all have standardized really nice quality you know what to expect with stonemeyer um and these games uh, in my opinion some of them if not a, a lot of them went even farther in quality and design and implementation than even some of those games. And I'm a huge fan of Stonemaier. Mind MGMT, this is by Off Page Games. Uh, this is designed by Jay Cormier. Um, and who else is it designed by? Uh, Senfu Lim, uh, and of course art by Matt Kent. Kind. Um, this is a one to five player game for 60 minutes, ages 13 and up, and it is a game in which you are attempting to find uh, players, like kind of like a Dracula, right? Or um, Mr. X game. Why am I not thinking of the title of this game? Um, but it's like hidden movement style game and you're going to be playing as either somebody attempting to find the person on the board or somebody attempting to hide from the other players on the board. But what's really crazy about mind management is it comes with this. This is kind of an expansion bundle and you can take these little expansion bundles out. They're gonna come with unique cards and tokens that you can utilize and implement in the game. When I got this, they came in little baggies and there was a couple of them. I did not expect there to be a boatload of them. And fact, the fact of it being in this type of a container that's also magnified, I think it's magnified, I can't tell. It's just really not, not magnified, but really, really high quality. Uh, this is beautiful. Not only is the design great in this game and the artwork, but how it's all put together. You do feel like you're living in the story of this game as you even take stuff out of the box. And everything is really well uh, put together. Look at this, this is a player screen and it actually has little slots to place your cards in as you're hiding stuff around the board. And it's super, super thick. This is probably one of the nicest player screens I have actually ever seen. 
Uh, you have the board for the game itself, and it's not only got a beautiful board that you're going to be utilizing as you're attempting to find the hidden movement characters or bad guys around the board, uh, but the steps of the game, how the rounds go, extra things that you can use to, to notify you about the different symbols on the board, um, extra things you can do or actions you can do just as kind of like a reminder text, and, ooh, I just hit the thing. <laughs> it's got... Uh, art, it's got artwork, it's got kind of a story, it's got a comic that's on the back. Things that you didn't even need to include. Like, I was even kind of like, why'd they do this? And I look at it and I'm like, well, this is really into the theme of the game. And I love it. I really love it. I, I, I was sold on it the moment I saw it, even before reading it. Just the idea of going above and beyond expectations in a board game is always great. Always something you should do. Uh, you have the board here. The previous one was nice. This is even better. And of course, why not? A comic on the back as well. Uh, you'll be using a dry erase marker to mark spaces off. And it comes with four different dry erase markers. Uh, this is what it comes with uh, as I unpacked it. I got to put all the pieces down. <laughs> It was fun to do this. Uh, it's been a long time since it was fun to actually put pieces into a game because they're all different and unique little like types of like components that feel different and touch different. And when it comes to unboxing a game, for most of you that are modern board gamers, one thing to pop a thousand chits, that's fun for most people. At least I enjoy it. They can get tedious after the 500th chit. This has all different types. And of course, even in here, I went through all the expansions, read how they did, what they did, how they functioned, the different components that came with the game, that came with different characters and stuff, and all the characters, uh, are high quality pieces of wood. This game was a joy to take out, to set up, uh, to relearn the rules, and then of course, to play as well. It's overall excellent in every way, not only just in the quality of the game, but the game itself. This was not what I was expecting when I, when I got the previous uh, prototype, not even close. Uh, and they just blew me out of the water. I was so happy with the decisions they made when it came to making this game and how they went about creating it as well. With just even the rule book itself, having little hints and like Easter eggs throughout the entire thing to explain the world and how it works. And the box itself does that as well. Uh, even on the sides of the box, it's got comic strips that are based on the game. It's got uh, words on the side of the box. Uh, they're kind of like the Annie or, you know, I can always call it the Orphan Annie Decoder Ring style messages. Uh, what more can I say? Mind management, you guys killed it. Uh, I'm not only um, willing to review any other games you come out with, but I am ecstatic to do so. I will be looking forward to it. Even the front of the box has hidden messages kind of and like feels great to touch. It has like the little luminous print on it. <sighs> you guys sold me on this one here for sure. I'm going to recommend this to people. And last but certainly not least is Relics of Raji Vahara. Uh, this game here is a one player game. It's a solo game uh, so for solo board gamers. And as most of you may know, I'm not a huge solo gamer like player, but this one I like. Uh, this one I like a lot because it reminds me of those old style like block kind of apps where you have your little character and you're moving and pushing blocks and jumping up and down on them. It's got kind of that sort of a retro feel but in a 3D experience. I didn't know what to expect with this game when I first got it to be honest. I'm like okay solo player game it looks kind of cool artwork looks pretty solid um, and when I got it, it was just a bunch of blocks and like envelopes and whatnot. I started opening up and experiencing it and understanding the puzzles and then me and Callie started playing together in a solo player game working together to solve the puzzles. This actually can be a great family experience. It can be a great two player experience. And then of course you can go back and forth with it. Or of course, just playing it one player works great as well. Uh, high quality game design, game implementation. And it's by Crazy Like a Box. That's the company name. Uh, it's also high quality as well. You'll be using this board here quite often uh, to place blocks down. And of course you'll have your characters. There's the rule book, which the game is very easy to explain as far as how it is played. I can explain this game to like somebody in five minutes. It comes with levels, just like you would expect an app or a video game. And you'll take out the levels based on what you want to play. Um, and then there's of course bonus packs to it as well. There's bonus expansions and it all fits in here as well. You have your characters, the bad guy and the good guy and the gems you need in order to need to acquire throughout the game. And each of these, these little boxes here, instead of little envelopes, come with blocks. And these blocks you'll be placing down on your board. They feel great. They're high quality blocks. These, these are great. I, I had a fun time just, just touching these and moving them around on the board. Um, and each of them also comes with a pack with a ton of different uh, cards 
or puzzles and levels. And you'll go through each one of them. You'll go to level one and level two and level three, and they have their own objectives and where you place your characters and the blocks and how high you place the blocks and what the blocks can do. And different blocks do different things. And when you get through the first level of all the different like sub levels, then you're gonna go into the next level with new blocks that do different things as well, which can also be implemented with other blocks. And then of course, the more levels you will be getting and you'll move on to the next one with even more blocks and more levels and more cards. And now instead of these just falling or being able to pick them and move them somewhere, uh, you can actually slide them across the entire table with just one simple push. And it just keeps going on from there. I think there's five total levels in this game. Um, and of course you'll be fighting a boss too uh, throughout the game that you have to like drop a brick on. Um, and then of course there's bonus packs as well. You know, standard quality size meeple characters. They're cute, they work very well. And then your basic little meeple, their little crystal gems here, pretty standardized. Um, and of course everything that needs to fit in the game box. Nothing extremely fancy as far as that's concerned, but it does the job as expected. All the artwork is solid. I do feel like I am moving along, attempting to gather relics, pushing blocks down with a retro feel from games I used to love in the past, and overall just an exciting experience for a solo player game. Uh, the previous one I liked was the, I can't remember what it's called now, The Falling Skies by AEG, no, 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 C CGE, I believe. It's one of the two, CG, AEG. Falling Skies is a wonderful solo player game, uh, which kind of more of like a, a feeling of asteroids coming down, falling to destroy aliens, I guess, coming down and destroy your base, and it's more die rolling style. This one here is kind of like app based, meets a solo player game. It kind of reminds me of Moonshell in a way, in the, the mermaid game my wife made, because of its puzzly nature, and of course the fact that it can be implemented into an app. Uh, but regardless, even still, I just had a lot of fun with this game and I just brought it out once to a party to show how the game played and people wanted to try it, even though I was just trying to explain it to them because they were curious. So that's like a good solid, uh, you know, I guess descriptor for the game or why it's, why it's fun. But nevertheless, Relics of Raji Vahara, uh, provided you can say the name, I suppose, is great. All five of these games did an excellent job, in my opinion, as far as high quality uh, game design, components, artwork, and I'm just thrilled to talk about them and the fact that they were willing to give me a free copy at the end of the campaign. So that's that's what I got, spoiler alert. So there you go, five games that I got after the campaign. And of course their qualities and what's coming in the box. It's kind of like five unboxings with a little bit of commentary. And these five games, I mean, I have others that I will do. It's gonna be a small box game. So if I was sent small box games, I'll have like 10 or so of those and I'll do like rapid fire shootouts. Um, but these ones I believe deserved a little extra attention because they got a lot of extra attention when it came to their design implementation and of course manufacturing. Very shocked with some of the manufacturing jobs of these games. I wanna know what the companies are that did these because Oof, good job. Uh, if I were to pick a favorite as far as high quality, like just quality as well, so I gotta kinda do one of those things, I think. I think I'd go with mind management. I think that was the one that blew me away the most. But it, realistically, honestly, all of these games do a great job. If you want a puzzle game, if you want hidden movement, if you want a single player puzzle game, if you want a dungeon crawler game, or if you want kind of a mix between a puzzler and a tower defense, here are five great options for you to choose from. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer after the campaign video. And of course, I look forward to seeing you next time.